Welcome to another presentation of the Sound and Emotions Conference. Now we have Jamie Lou. Hey, Jamie Lou. Wee, 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 Hello. Wee. <laughs> <laughs> Jamie Lou facilitates spiritual healing with her psychic gifts and telepathy and empathy, joined with her gifts in sound and light work. She uses the crystal bowls and her voice to bring through guided songs, tones, and light languages to affect transformation across the mind, body, and soul. She came into her healing gifts after directly experiencing contact with the other side and after exploring our, uh, her ancestral and spiritual lineage that is connected to ancient Lemuria. She be be began to work directly with the infinite love and wisdom of source that le led her work to work with led her to work with ascended masters, angelic beings, and guardian alliances on a daily basis. This wisdom guided her through self-practice and remembrance of how to heal, and most importantly, why healing is needed at this time of ascension in humanity. She completely transformed her health, healing a heart and thyroid condition after leaving her old life and career in corporate America. She is now world renowned for working with difficult Ill illnesses and helping healers and way showers receive their gifts, remembrances, and healing abilities. What have you been up to lately? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, what a time to be alive, huh? <laughs> we're, not, we're not bored, huh? We are not bored. We are not bored. To answer your question, I've been busy. I've been really busy. Um, with a lot of uh, service to others, sessions back to back, as well as sessions with myself, a lot of self care, which I know is really important for, for us healers and empaths and anyone who's sensitive to uh, the, the immense energies that are at play right now on our planet uh, that are truly working within us, you know, to bring to the surface that which we need to heal and that which we need to wake up to. So this is an exciting time to be alive <laughs> and to be awake, uh, to be awakening, to, to, to come into more awareness, because with that awareness, not only do we, you know, do we heal um, from places of suffering, we, we also learn and grow, you know, we learn and grow and become better, better people, I want to say, you know, more in the heart and more available to each other um, to really help each other. So, yeah. I've been thinking, it's interesting, I've been thinking a lot lately, and, and reading as well, how, uh, how critical that challenges and, and problems are for our growth. And in fact, it's actually built in that actually, if everything were perfect, we wouldn't grow and really, really expand, right? And so we can be really grateful for all of these ch challenges and difficult times. Indeed, indeed. And, and, and there are times too when, you know, surrendering to the pain is exactly the healing. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've experienced that for myself, healing dengue fever back when I lived in the jungles of Bali, which I know, David, you know, a little bit about my history. So mm -hmm. I used to live in Bali and in, in India for, for many years. And um, I was bitten by a mosquito, got dengue fever, which is very common, <laughs> you know, common disease of the jungle. And I only, I only got to experience it for like two days, two days of excruciating pain, just massive pain. And it, it triggered all this fear, this, this like paralyzing fear in my body. And I was in fetal position and, and, you know, I tapped into my guides because that's all I could do, <laughs> you know, and, um, they immediately told me that this is this is for you not to fix you know this is not to fix the pain this is to actually surrender to the pain so can you surrender to this pain and surrender to all this fear that is crippling you right now and, and i i took that message to heart i did just that i completely poof just in a big let go to this pain, you know surrendering to to what was like fully accepting it and the next day i was free of dengue fever, no more symptoms, the rash went away. Uh, you know, the, I went to verify with the doctors locally and they were like, yep, you don't have it anymore. <laughs> and wow. I was like, what? <laughs> wow. You know, a lot of our, a lot of our medical problems actually stem from trying to suppress pain, trying to fix it, trying to, you know, make it go away. 
-hmm. versus really embracing it. And, and, and this is this is kind of the, a difference between, you know, um, uh, the, the Western medical world and the healing world. You know, the holistic healing world is, is very much of a different philosophy and that we want to embrace that which is, you know, real, that which is arising, that which is in your reality without judgment, without shame. And it is through that, you know, that, that kind of compassion, that embrace of what is that we could actually uh, catalyze healing, right? It's an, it's an alchemy. It's a sa very sacred alchemy. It's just one energy turning one energy into another energy. Um, an energy of health from an energy of suffering. So it's, yeah, I, I don't like to look at pain or suffering as something that's wrong with our society. I, I feel like it's an invitation to go into what is so right. It is so society. so counterintuitive. It's like, you know, I saw, uh, I was a, a part of a video uh, on healing that, and this one woman, she had a brain tumor for like seven years. And then finally, one morning she, she thought, uh, I just, God damn it, I wish this would go away. And she thought, hmm, that energy is not really cool. And she thought, what would be the opposite? And she thought, okay, this cancer has changed my life. You're welcome to stay the rest of my life. And within a month, after seven years, within a month, it was gone. It's so counterintuitive, you know, it's like, okay, you, because we're not saying bring it on, right? Right. right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that, that's very good, very good distingu uh, distinguishment to make, right? There's mm -hmm. a discernment there that um, we awaken to when we're, we are intending to truly heal. And, and it's, it's learning that, you know, there is hope and there is a solution. It's waiting on the other side of our anger and our grief, right? So it's... <laughs> It's not about, you know, becoming that anger and, and getting so angry at that cancer, getting so angry at that dengue fever or whatever it is, or angry at that headache, you know, and it's just saying, oh, okay, fine, you know, do, do with me as you will. No, <laughs> that's not what it's about. It's really about an emotional maturity, which I'm sure we're going to talk more about today as this is, this is a presentation about emotions, but, well, you know, that we, we, in embracing it with love and acceptance, we, we go into an emotional maturity hmm. and there's the hope right there on the other side. That's how we, we actually alchemize this, this pain, this suffering. It was interesting because, you know, I had a blood clot from my hip down to my ankle, right? And immediately I knew I had to be really disciplined to not go into fear and not actually to worry about it at all. That was so critical. I knew I couldn't do that. And so I was so uh, disciplined about it's done. It's a, it's, it's a done deal. It's, it's taken care of. It's, it, and just seeing that was definitely going away. And after nine months, it's completely gone. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's... <laughs> Yeah, it's good, it's good to celebrate that. It's so good to celebrate yeah. the, the healings, the wins, you know, because it's true, it's real. And I know we, we live in, you know, a culture that is looking for proof, right? It's, it, it, it kind of categorize us healers as weird. We're kind of in the strange, <laughs> the strange box, right? And, you know, all the, the holistic healing stuff and energy healing stuff and sound healing stuff. That's all woo woo. But to me, I, I've experienced what we've called miracles so many times that it's it's the new normal now for me. It's 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 something that um, can be repeated, okay? Which is what science will look for. They they look to for, for something to be a repeatable, right? And then then we can say, okay, that there there's proof to this. This this is real. And um, I've experienced this myself as a healer, and now doing thousands of healing sessions how, you know, just understanding, understanding how the body works as an electromagnetic energy source. It is this electromagnetic living thing, <laughs> okay? And, you know, we, we in our modern society don't really approach our understanding about ourselves and about our bodies this way. We don't approach our health in this way. But so much could actually open up if, if we started to look at things differently. If we really started to 
to look at um, how the body works and functions as as a, a electromagnetic consciousness. You know, this thing that is very much alive and has needs. It has very uh, subtle um, but real needs, and their energetic needs, emotional needs. Um, if if we kind of miss <laughs> miss uh, the the intuitive signal. And this is why we have intuition, okay? Every single person has an intuition. We might have different, you know, um, different ways we access it. And we might have different uh, ways that intuition comes through, okay? But every single person has one. Every single soul has an intuition. And that intuition is there for the primary purpose of telling us, okay? Of showing us that, we know, okay, that we know something's up, right? We know that there's, okay, maybe I got a, I have a need that I might, I might be avoiding, right? Or might, might not be addressing, right? We, we can feel that. We can tap into the knowing of that. You don't have to be a psychic to, to just have, a, you know, a gut feeling about yourself because you are you and you're going to know you better than any doctor out there and better than any healer. You, you, you really are going to know you. And, and, and the, the thing that uh, will really help humanity, this is what I've, what I've learned through my healing sessions, is if we can release the illusions, right, these veils, and sometimes they're really thick, really, really thick. Um, these, these illusions, I call them lies because they are, they're straight up lies that keep us, they're barriers, okay? They keep us from truly accessing that knowing truly accessing that, the, the, uh, the inner gnosis uh, that knows that, that there is a problem or that knows what exactly it is you need mm -hmm. to get through that problem, right? right? Right. There are so many solutions now and there really is no, no good excuse. There is no good excuse right. uh, to, to not have that solution in your hands and not give that to yourself. I okay? think the biggest lie is we can't heal ourselves. Mm -hmm. The truth is, we can heal ourselves. It's so interesting that I would say a large percentage of people, when they have a physical issue, never ever think, oh, what if I shifted or did emotional work? Right? Because it's... A lot of people say it's the it's a hundred percent of the cause of disease is emotional issues. That the toxins wouldn't get in if there weren't emotional openings. Okay, so so so, tell us, uh, is there, do you have an approach, or is it and how is it different for different people and and, what it, what, how we, how how do you do it? You want to know my secrets? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, your secrets are our secrets. Then they won't be secrets anymore. <laughs> right, right. Because we already know. Yeah, and we we could just we could just end right now because we already um, know. Well, this is this is actually so important to share. Okay, because it's it's high time that people understand the secret. Okay, and then not be a secret anymore. It's high time that we demystify healing, and and really make that accessible and available to all. You know, it's something that I've, I've learned through, through my own realization process of healing, healing myself from egregious disease. Um, and, you know, that's still a work in progress. OK, and I'll get into that. But just just from my 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 own learnings and growings, I, I don't think I'm any better or special than anyone else. I feel like we are all capable of of the gift of healing, whether it's through healing hands, healing voice, um, uh, the way you, you can work with energy, whatever it is um, that you do. And each, each soul can have access to their own gift, okay? But each soul has that opportunity. Each soul has that capacity to awaken um, the gift and not just the gift, but the knowledge. And that is equally important, right? The knowledge of, of, of this, of this reality, uh, how the body functions, how it sings, in life, you know, how it, how it loves to, uh, how it wishes to exist in life as, as a healthy, thriving being, 
You know, we're, we're, we are here as spirit. So I believe we, we are spirit in form. We are spirit having a human experience. We are, we get to, we're borrowing this body. Okay. And we chose this body and it is our, our responsibility to take care of this body and love, you know, our, our love is not an emotion. Love is, is actually a very high intelligence. It's a consciousness. Mm -hmm. um, it's a sound, it's, it's a frequency. And that love has infinite wisdom and it's inexhaustible energy. Okay. It is inexhaustible. And that's because it comes from source. So this, this love that I'm speaking about is infinite consciousness that we can tap into and we can work with on a conscious level once we understand, you know, that we are capable and that how exactly the body works. Okay. And emotions is a really big part, a really big part. I, I have to say from my only, um, from the thousands of, of sessions that I've done, I, I, more than 80%. Okay, more than 80% of the issues that I help people with are emotional based, for sure. The rest could be entirely spiritual, um, Accidents you know, uh, right, uh, uh, could be due to diet, could be due to relationship environment. But for the most part, emotions play a massive role in one's healing process. And often when, you know, uh, when I meet people who um, come to me and they say, well, I've been to every workshop, I've been to every healer, I've tried all the modalities and I'm still not well, right? And my heart just aches when, whenever I receive a client like this, but I realize they're coming to me because they haven't yet been held in a space where they feel safe. They feel safe enough to really drop into a sensitive and um, deep, really deep place within themselves to resurrect these emotions they might not ha have even known were trapped in their body. Okay. So I'm speaking about trapped emotions. And these are the kind of emotions, the emotions we keep a lid on and that we don't even know. It could be unconscious. A lot of times it is unconscious. Um, th these are the emotions that, that do harm. That, that cause harm on our biology and our bodies are constantly praying. Okay, the wisdom in our bodies are praying <laughs> for us to, to realize this one day and to, and to take action that uh, will help, that will actually help alleviate um, uh, these, these emotions. And, and the reason why is because emotions are electricity. Okay, and they're powerful electricity. Again, we're, we're electromagnetic beings. And, um, and so we're always um, uh, receiving and producing energy. Okay, we're doing both. We're receiving it and we're producing it. We are creating it all the time. We're highly, highly energetic <laughs> beings. And even if you're, you know, you're like, oh, no, I'm not energetic at all. Like I'm tired all the time, right? <laughs> even in your fatigue, you are producing and, uh, and, and receiving energy. Um, the, the state of, of pain, okay. The state of pain is really just a, a, uh, I'm trying to find the, the right words here because I'm actually feeling, I'm tapping into it as we, we speak about this. The state of pain is a invitation for our own wisdom, okay? Our own wisdom, our own awareness to acknowledge that there is a, a, a freeze here, right? My electricity is frozen, okay? And that's what a trapped emotion is. It's frozen, it's frozen electricity. It, it's, it's electricity that got wound up and it can't move anymore. It kind of got trapped in a box and we put that box there, whether we know it or not. And oftentimes we call that a block, right? Because it is, it's a block and it's blocking our energetic flow. Um, every emotion, whether it's a dense emotion like anger, hatred, uh, jealousy, or a light emotion like joy, right? <laughs> um, all emotion is energy in motion. That's what emotion is, energy in motion. So when we block the flow, and it's typically we block the flow through um, our conditioning, right? Growing up and, and being told that, oh no, Jamie, you can't, you know, it's not ladylike to, to, to throw a fit, 
right? You can't get angry. <laughs> Don't talk back. That was a lot of my, my upbringing. Um, a, 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 what's very common in our culture is you can't cry, right? So, so we suppress the tears, we hold back the tears. This is not natural. This is not natural at all. We, we, we are, again, electromagnetic beings. We, it is natural for us to experience what I call emotional freedom. And what emotional freedom is, it's not being free of emotions. Not at all. It's not that. <laughs> it's actually being in the state of freedom with our emotions, you know, feeling like I have the freedom to cry when I'm sad. And that's okay. It's safe to do that, right? There's, I don't care what anyone else thinks. Like I'm just, I'm going to give this to myself. Uh, could be, I feel free to be pissed off right now because that's how I feel right now. Right? <laughs> it's, it's it's the freedom that we give ourselves to feel the emotion, express it freely, and move on. Okay, that that emotional freedom is a major part of the healing process. Because if we don't give that to ourselves, then they become trapped in these little, these boxes it, within the body, these places of tension, okay? So- And they can show up, they could show up as disease, headaches, whatever, whatever symptom. It's interesting because while you were talking, I was thinking about how they get trapped. I mean, from not expressing, of course, but but how it actually happens. Uh, I, 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 I'm trying to. I've never really, really got it because some people say it gets trapped in the cells. Some say it gets tra trapped in the, the blood or in the bones, and uh, you know. But maybe it just gets trapped in the throat chakra, and so it's interesting because it's if if you think of a river. And it's almost like it's actually, it's it's just this, the only way I can explain it is, ah, 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 right? And somehow that sound, that energy, not, not flow, that energy not flow, <laughs> goes into the actual body or maybe it's also stored in your electromagnetic field as well. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Yes. And and so, but it, it, it gets, so it gets stored. So it's almost like this little sound is in each cell, sitting there, going, "I'm still here." Ah. Yes, ah. I'm still here. <laughs> yeah. Will you see me? Right. right. Will you see right. me? Right. right. Mm -hmm. That, that's that's what it's asking for. And it really, it, it shows just how much, you know, mankind has been robbed of its own responsibility to, to care for itself. But that's what it shows me. And that this is this is what opens my heart to just so much compassion for people who are in suffering. I mean, it, it, and I don't care, you know, what you go through, all pain is pain. And, and we all experience that, you know, because we're all human. And we all have an act, you know, like, that. <laughs> <We're> all, <laughs> you know, there's, there is um, uh, disharmonies that, that live within our bodies. And, and what, what's empowering is, is we could realize that we actually create them. You know, we create our own monsters. We create our own demons. Um, how we do that is, is the most empowering thing to realize. And I'm not going to talk about how we do that, but it's, it's just important right now to kind of acknowledge um, for this conversation that, we, we really create, we create on unconscious levels because that's how powerful we are as creators. We create the good and the bad of our experiences and we do it together too. We co-create it with our family members. We co-create it with our ancestors. We co-create it with the collective for, for bigger reasons than we might not be aware of right now, okay? That might not be in our kind of forward, you know, uh, here, here right now in front of us, right? Um, so, <laughs> it's interesting, you know, okay, so um, there's, with with the pain, what some p people do, and I, I've got like some pain in my knee, right, over the last week, and I, I'm thinking, I may not be able to walk, right? And I know that's a dangerous thought, because it's going into fear, or I think it's quite common when people are getting old 
they have anything going on, they think, oh, is this, you know, am I going down? And so it becomes a whole emotional thing, big time, of fear, which I think is worse than the pain, possibly. Yes, yes it's, it's the emotional aspect to uh, what, what happens in life. Right. And th things just happen in life. It's for our learning and growing. We, we are meant, we're not meant to have a boring existence. We're meant to go through things, okay, as a soul. And we, we learn and grow through. That, that's the whole point of, of suffering. And the, the, the danger in what you're talking about is how we get wrapped up in the story. And the moment we get wrapped up in the story, now we're creating electricity around that story. Okay. So you see, we're empowering that story. So let's say the story is what you're telling yourself right now that I can't walk, evident of this pain in my knee. So what's happening in your head is you're jumping to a conclusion, right? The head is, the mind is taking over and th there's a jump to conclusion. And then now all of a sudden you you go into creating an emotion around that, which you know could be really heavy. So imagine um, that thought, that thought form, you know, attached to the story of what, what is happening right now in life. And it starts to build and it, it, it becomes like this little monster. <laughs> okay. <laughs> as I, I laugh because I see this all the time in my session. Psychically, I see entities and I help people remove these entities out of the body. But all that an entity is, is our own little creations. We, we've created these little monsters that, that are full of the emotions that, that we, um, of how we feel monsters about this story. With Monsters with a little distorted sound going on too. Oh yeah, I mean it's cute. It's good. It's not. I never think of it as um, a, you know, a bad thing. Of course, it could be harmful, absolutely. But, but um, you know, that that dissonant sound uh, is what tells us, right? It, it's it's a signal for healing to happen. It's a signal for transformation to occur that's the invitation that, that we, we each have and I think I think this is what you know in terms of the average person what we, we tend to forget um, we heal about we hear about healing we hear about these possibilities and these possible alternative solutions that are out there but how, how can we believe that this is true right how can we believe that this this can really help me through whatever I'm experiencing through my cancer through my depression right through my headaches um, how can this really help me when all I know is how to stay in my head and spin, right? Spin these really dense energies and, and just work myself into a, an emotional rut, right? Where I'm just depressed all the time and where I'm exhausted all the time. Exhaustion is just a lack of energy. It's all being tied up <laughs> into your body, into these tensions. That's, a, that's a, the effect of depression. So you don't wanna get out of bed, right? You don't wanna celebrate life. You don't wanna, you don't even see the possibility of, of of being alive, so these things are very real for people. You know, the pain is very real, and that's why it's easier to just go see um, go see the pharmacist and pop a pill. But that pill will never ever address the root cause of the issue. I promise you that it, it will it will help. Maybe you know, regain some energy. Will help maybe boost your immunity. It might might help in some things block receptors, right, to that depression, but, you know, it, it will never address the root cause. And this is where I, I'm seeing a really big fundamental shift happening in healthcare today. A lot of doctors are realizing that and they they really are interested in helping people find the cure. And that cure is really only available when we look at the big picture, right? We look at the whole picture and we see how all the dots connect, right? Um, there's, there's this really good tool online, I often refer it during my sessions, it's called the emotion code chart. And it's just, a, it's a simple chart. You could look it up right now on Google. And that shows you where uh, universally, how human bodies, where uh, we, we tend to store emotions, trapped emotions in the human body. So um, if, if I look at it right now, I can, I can tell you that here we go, the stomach, right? How many of us suffer from digestive issues? The stomach is often prone to storing anxiety, despair, disgust, nervousness, worry. This is, this is the stomach, right? Um, the spleen 
can often be the storage house for feelings of failure, helplessness, hopelessness, lack of control, low, low self-esteem. So anywhere where we um, have ever experienced that through our life experience as a soul, okay? And especially, uh, especially since we were young, because we tend to be very emotional <laughs> um, when, when we're young, right? And experiencing a lot and processing a lot when we're young. So if, if there's anywhere where, um, you know, our, our inner child, uh, you know, suffered through some pretty heavy emotions and didn't know how to resolve them, didn't know how to process them, which I mean, who does, right? We're not taught this. So we do the best we can. And what happens is those unresolved emotions get stuck in the body and it could live in our stomach. It could live in the spleen or it could live in the lungs, right? Grief tends to live in the lungs. Um, the bladder tends to hold a uh, conflict and that can manifest as recurrent UTIs. Um, it's, this is, these are root, okay, root perspectives that can really empower the healing process. It could actually create a significant shift in our clients. And I often see that this is the case. We have to go into the emotional body and investigate what is really happening on a deeper level at the root level, what emotions have been um, suppressed uh, within the body for this person to manifest that specific illness, right? The, the organs, each organ has, um, it has like a, a magnetism, I want to say there's a mag, like a, like an inner magnet that the liver has, for example, that it just tends to attract anger. So wherever we've been angry and we haven't known how to really process that healthily, um, because we don't live in a culture that embraces emotional freedom. So we tend to suppress it there and it sits in the liver. And that of course, you know, causes um, blocks in the liver. So that can manifest into all sorts of conditions regarding a blocked liver, right? Um, but the, these, are, these are common examples. So what are the, what are the, what's the approach? Well, how do we do it? What, what are all the ways? All the ways. Well, what's, what's really cool is, uh, if, if you don't mind, David, <laughs> I'm getting something. I'm get, I, and I've been, I've been holding it ever since we started, we, ever since we started talking. So I'm like, oh, this energy really wants to speak. Okay. And um, so I'd like to ask you, would it be okay if I read this energy and, and, and perhaps answer that question? Uh -huh, please. Okay. So I'm just gonna relax the mind and you, you might hear me speak some light language, which helps me calm the mind. I am being shown your knee. It's one knee, <laughs> just one knee. I'm being taken to this knee and Okay, and now I'm seeing blood. So I'm just seeing uh, blood cells right now, blood flow. And, and this blood flow feels very flowing. Okay, this is a, this is a healthy blood flow. Whew. But your knee is talking. And I just wanna listen to the knee. Oh, interesting. Okay. So as, as I'm listening to your knee, it's making like this sound. Okay. Like a, it's like a kickback. It's kicking back. And then here I'm seeing the blood again. So that there's, I'm being shown how there's a connection between that kickback kind of response with your knee and blood 
flow, how your blood is flowing and how, okay, how it has flown. So there's a little bit of the past here coming in. And now I'm feeling, okay, this is it. So I've, I've hit the root. Um, I'm feeling an emotion right now. And this is heavy. Oh, it's heavy. So I'm just going to breathe through this. Oh. And it really, it's hit, it's hitting the heart. It's like I really feel this in the heart. I'm feeling, um, I'm feeling, I'm feeling tears here. I just feel a great sense of loss. There's sorrow. There is like a, like a devastating pain that, that is connected here to um, an individual. Okay, then they're showing me a person. It could be one or two people, but I'm seeing an, it very strongly a person, a person here. And I'm just gonna listen. Oh. And what wants to be said here is that you, um, it's like you've been impacted. Okay, I'm seeing this impact um, almost as if an injury has happened, but it's not a physical injury. This is more of an emotional injury. This, yeah, this is an emotional injury. It does feel like it, it was inflicted by this person or this person is a big, just plays a big role in, in this emotional injury. acknowledging and accepting this right now as the story is playing out. And the message here is to, okay, yeah, they're saying you, you've been, you've been hearing the message and you, you've been doing very well at, at applying the wisdom here, which is to not react anymore to this person. There is something about the more that you react the more it, it um, kind of rip, it affects your blood, the vibration in your blood. And this is having some kind of effect on the knee. Like it could do this kick, this kickback in the knee. And I don't know if that's making any sense at all, but this is just <laughs> what I'm seeing. Yes. Yeah. Well, okay. And they're also saying that, um, and this is your body talking, not, not anything outside of you. This is your body talking, your body saying I'm, I'm ready. I'm, I'm so ready to love, to love uh, fully again. To, yeah, this to love fully again, to, to uh, let go of this, this grief, this sadness, and to step fully into the love. So I just want to breathe through this here with you, David. I just want to acknowledge what came through for you and let me know if that resonated at all. I'm crying too much to let you know. <laughs> yes, I know exactly who you're talking about and exactly Yes, this whole hit and learning compassion. Yeah. And self love. Self love. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You you were asking earlier, like, how do we transform it? Mm -hmm. This this process that I I'm crying to now. <laughs> Yeah, I really, I really do feel it with you. That's how I can read it so strongly. Um, because I'm not afraid to feel it with you. Uh, and I feel like we need allies for, for people's emotions right now. Um, so feel it with them, you know, make them know it's, it's safe. Because this is how we get to the solution. And we, we need to dig down, just like I did 
you know, and in this reading, I, I wanted to see what was behind the knee, right? What was behind that, that locking up. And I wanted to see what the connection was. And it immediately took me to the blood for some reason. And your blood spoke about another person. And, and now we're learning that the antidote for what your body needs um, is self-love. And it, perhaps to you know forgive this person and not react, right? Not react and really let, okay, let this person go and no longer take it out on yourself, right? Um, yeah, that this is, this is the kind of healing that is available uh, to each and every one of us. It, it comes from a deeper understanding, right? Of, of our connection and how it all connects, how our relationships, right? Have a lot to do with <laughs> how we feel and, and what manifests and what doesn't manifest. So. It's, inter it's so interesting. I was just thinking, you know, people talk about releasing emotions and you need to express them. But after you release it, the whole thing is, where do you go? Right? And, and I'm thinking, okay, the answer ultimately is almost always universal love. Right? Just you, there's infinite, indescribable love here that anybody can access, really, and it's, 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 it's unbelievable, right? And so there's that. Then there's also the energy of compassion to really, really learn that it's nobody's fault. Yes, yes. That that's important to right. understand. It's not mm -hmm. anybody's fault. It's it's this it's this uh, maybe it's the planet's fault, right? <laughs> it's a, for tens of thousands of years there's been these patterns on the planet. It's nobody's fault, and so it's really about. And then uh, you could just do self love. Uh, so I send self love to my own heart. If you can't access universal love, right? It's like because it's really the 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 whole thing is not just letting go of the emotion although if it's stuck it needs it needs a little it's it's like it's a little lonely it needs a little attention right yeah. but after you release it where are we going exactly this is this is it and that this is where i want to talk about the ascended masters and and perhaps depression because it, it's a good example to illustrate this connection um so when I, I went through my healing journey, um, and many of you all already know this, as you've seen me speak on uh, with David before, um, I used to suffer through so many diseases, and that has a lot to do with being a sensitive, you know, a sense of very sensitive person, very psychically in tune since I was born, um, and, and just not knowing how to be with that, right? How to be in the world as a sensitive person. And all I wanted to do was be accepted um, so I did the overachieving thing, right? I overachieved. I became very successful in, in corporate America. I, I busted my butt <laughs> work and, and that created so much stress and disconnection from my own self. Um, I, I later on uh, cut, would come to heal a severe heart condition, thyroid problem, all sorts of problems, digestive issues, liver problems, anger issues, depression. I went through really uh, big depression where I was clinically diagnosed and medicated for it. I no longer have these ailments. I no longer suffer through these because now I know what it's all about. Um, I understand what manifested these experiences for me and I've learned and grown through them. So now I no longer need to have those experiences. Um, now I get to experience other things. <laughs> other other interesting ailments um so that I'm, I'm working through so yeah it's a, <laughs> I, I feel like every every um every negative experience that we can go through life health or otherwise is an invitation to learn and grow and to come into the self to come home to ourselves um and i found this especially true with depression so the way that i heal depression and the way I help others heal depression, it's not a one-off thing. It's not a, hey, come see Jamie for a session, you know, and be miraculously healed. It really is a process. It's a journey that one goes through because the only antidote to depression is in finding yourself, really finding yourself. Because the, the root 
the root of all depression <laughs> is the lie that you lack, you lack a sense of self, okay? That is why people get depressed. And it, it can come from years of being bullied, years of being bashed, years of getting criticism, years of low self-esteem. It could be that. Um, it could be just, you know, what people say to you and, and you don't know how to clear that energy. So it just kind of sticks and becomes like this spiritual vomit <laughs> you know, that is stuck, stuck on your energy body and you haven't cleared it off. So it's other people's stuff and it just gets to you. Um, that can cause depression, but ultimately what it's eating at, it's eating at your sense of self, okay? And as soon as that sense of self goes away, you've got depression, clinical depression, symptoms of depression, don't wanna get out of bed, right? No, don't wanna you know, um, engage in, in anything positive. It's much easier to just kind of stay deflated. So um, I- what, what would you say? Um, when I think of a sense of self, mm -hmm. I think of I'm a pure spirit, perfect in every way. I think of I'm a point of awareness, just witnessing and watching everything. I think of I'm a soul yes, with all my yeah. past lives and information. I think I'm also a uh, um, just a I'm universal love. Yes. Right? Right. Yes. So and all of those. So that, that's where I've what I've been thinking of as myself lately and identifying with those which are stable, consistent vibrations stable, that are totally. Vibration. Yeah, it's not chaotic at all. Yes, it becomes very chaotic and very harmful when we lose our sense of self because we lose our stability. We lose our anchor. You know, we often identify it, it, with our emotions. We think our self is our emotion or, or it's our body or, you know, it's even our mind. Mm -hmm, exactly. And that's not the self. And this is where the learning is. And it was a big learning curve for me to understand. I am not the mind. I am not these stories that I attach to and I, I perceive, right? I, I, I see through my eyes and I think, oh, this is the story, but it's actually not, <laughs> right? But the self really comes from your inner knowing. It's your inner gnosis. It's your soul. Mm. It, there's wisdom there. There's beauty there. There's love, infinite love and energy there. So when the world teaches us that we're not that, that we're not the soul, boom, we've got lots, lots of problems to contend with because it will manifest from this place of lack. And this de depression is exactly that. And the only way to, to get through it is to um, start practicing, right? Putting into practice. And of course, I would recommend sessions because energy work, sound work is immense for liberating a lot of the, the stuck emotions and the nasty energetics that could be contributing to the downward spiral. Um, once you get yourself elevated again, there's a practice of knowing who you are, right? Realizing who you are. And that is, this is where the ascended masters come in for me. You know, the, the, David, you're speaking because you work with them too. And you work with the infinite consciousness, the higher realms that you've awakened to. So that's why you can say with confidence, I know who I am. I am the universal love. And this is what we are. The, at the end of this, right? There's no end to, end to it, but at the core of what we are is universal love. And everything where we feel like we're not, we're not this endless love is the lie, quite frankly. That's the lie that we keep telling ourselves, that we tell each other, that we propagate in the media, that you know, it's we've created a whole world that um, where's the love, right? Where's the love <laughs> in our world? So we're, we're constantly kind of dealing with a, um, a disconnection, a fundamental disconnection to self, to self as this inexhaustible source energy that we are. We are light beings and we have a responsibility to be it, right? To be it, to act accordingly. And when we act accordingly, not only do we prosper, right? And we have a sense of purpose. We actually, we thrive in, 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 in our health. We thrive in our wellness. And when we thrive in our health and wellness, we become abundant in our care because we now care for ourselves. You see, we, we've learned how to truly love and support ourselves um, in ways that we didn't before, right? I like to say that we, um, humanity is, is kind of like born, born into the darkness and uh, 
from this disconnection, from this place of lacking awareness of itself. And then it, it, it evolves out of that, it, it awakens and becomes this beautiful butterfly where it knows itself, it, it, it is full of love, it's abundant, and it knows how to be the butterfly. You know, you, you, you go from, um, I've heard some people call it a rebirth, right? You can re, re, be reborn into love and, and act accordingly because that is what you are. You're not, you're not anything else anymore. This is ultimately the antidote to depression. It's, it is, you know, the depression is the manifestation of that lack. That's all it is. And once you realize the abundance of you, <laughs> it's game over. It is game over. No, no longer would, would you need therapy, right? There, there really is a place of wholeness that, that we come home to. And I think um, a, lot of, a lot of disease, I know it's true for me, and I see that it's true for a lot of my clients that I've helped. Whatever your disease story is, you know, it's just a story and it will help us traverse this, this journey I'm talking about, this kind of rebirth where we, we were born into the fear and now, and then we're, we're born into the love and, and we come into that light and we become that. So it's not enough to just like, oh, heal me, right? It's not enough to heal our, our, our physical ailments. It really is, what are we becoming through that healing, right? What are we becoming through that healing? That's, that's where our ascended self, um, I, I, I work with ascended masters. I know you do too. David, which is why we, we play so well together. <laughs> but you know, Yeshua, the Christed light beings, our Christed family, and the light is not Christianity at all. It's 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 very much having a relationship with the Buddha within, you know, the Christ within. Kuan Yin has been um, massive for me. She's been a major teacher for me. All of these uh, ascended beings and, and our guardian angels really do support our awakening process from the world of fear and shame into the world of love and light and, and having a, a direct real experience of that love and light not only heals our bodies, but it returns us to the self. You know, the self that is stable, safe, secure, can live in emotional freedom, right? We can live, you know, I, like we could just cry right now, like, we're, <laughs> like we did, <laughs> you know, and, and that's okay, that's okay. Okay, I've got an interesting thought. So I'm a butterfly and I land on the sidewalk and somebody squashes me. <laughs> and I get a little upset. In fact, maybe a lot upset especially if they're squashing other butterflies. Yeah. And so it's interesting because anger is natural at the 3D level, yeah. right? So, and then if you get upset, then there's often like, Oh, I suck because I got upset. Which is the whole nother little monster. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> <Right? Little> monster. <laughs> <laughs> and it's interesting because, you know, I always look at compassion, which I don't think many people know how to do. I mean, it's, it's really pretty simple. I mean, you know, one way is to just, I always ask, you know, what brought them to do what they're doing? And it's the craziness of our society, but also to see them as a, to see, to look in and see the light in them, the source in them, the God, mm -hmm. in them, which is hard to do sometimes, mm -hmm. right? To, so that's helpful, but mostly just knowing when you get angry, over more than a few minutes, because that's kind of natural, you're running this uh, through your body. You're hurting yourself. I saw this quote, I forget who it was, it said, uh, actually it was from, from a really well-known guy, he said, you know, when you get angry, it's like you're, you, you think that, 
I forget the quote. It's it just perfect. It was like, you're killing yourself by actually getting angry, right? And you feel so justified to kill yourself. <laughs> yeah. And that there, there's another monster right there. See how we create so many monsters through judgment, through judgment. And uh, what a judgment is, is a polarity, right? We're polarizing <laughs> reality and making it, you know, one way or the other, good, bad, right, wrong, dark, light. You know, it's it, the more that we, we kind of polarize things, um, we, we lose the net neutrality, the neutrality of spirit of our ascended self. And, and so, yeah, you know, let, let, let's, let, let's look at your example. I really like your example. We're all butterflies. Right? A lot of squashed butterflies around here. There, and there's a lot of <laughs> butterflies right now being bashed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you that um, I have within myself, I have been called, guided without any of my control. I can't control this, what my spirit does. But my spirit is called to, to really step up and speak loudly um about these things because it's not okay you know bullying is not okay all of that comes from the world of, of fear um it comes from the illusion and can we also speak from it from a place of absolute compassion absolute unwavering compassion as we wield the truth of that so um you know i i i often talk about anger anger is such a big teacher for me and I've learned that anger has many flavors to it, okay? Now, what David is speaking to is very true. And David, you especially are, I think, powerful to, to share that message because you talked about your blood clot, right? The, the, the blood um, issue that you were experiencing. Um, I have found out, you know, through, through my readings that uh, when we weaponize anger, it directly affects our blood. So you're right, it gets into the blood. Blood is a conduit of our vibration. Our thoughts, our feelings, it's all running through our blood. So if we got this nasty, you know, aggressive, intense anger, just searing, it, it's searing our blood vessels. It is frying the nervous system, the nerve endings. It's it's contributing to damage in the blood. So that, that happens, okay, straight up. Gotta be direct about that so we can understand how we can contribute to our own self-harm. There's actually no. a, a book I saw years ago, and they actually showed the science of exactly what it does to the veins when, when, mm -hmm. when it, but it's more rage. Right, right? rage. Mm -hmm. Right, right, mm -hmm. rage, other than. And, but, mm -hmm. and it's, it's a rage that, here's the thing we have to discern, okay? Mm -hmm. It's the rage energy that is really hell-bent on destruction, okay? Mm -hmm. It's like, mm -hmm where where revenge feelings kind of come in where really like deceitful hatred feelings come in um this is a weaponized anger okay that's mm -hmm. why i say that there, there are different flavors to anger and mm -hmm. there is the kind of anger that we can weaponize mm -hmm. um that is the harmful anger that is the stuff that can really destroy our, our biology pretty quickly and and also there's no shame okay just there's no shame of having these feelings i myself have raged <laughs> <laughs> I know what this is. I speak from experience. There's no shame here. Um, but what we can, what we what will help under people understand um, and really come from a place of empowerment with, with their expression of anger is that you can choose, okay? You can choose to weaponize that anger and harm yourself and harm an, another, okay? You can choose to be harmful about it, which is reactive, okay? That's the reactive version of anger. Uncontrolled completely. Yep. And then you can choose to suppress it. And this is just as deadly, just mm. as harmful. This is mm. what I did when I was a little girl. So we can suppress that anger, which means put a lid on it. <laughs> you know? um, and usually, typically, it's because I'm afraid. I'm afraid of who I'm going to become if I show my anger, right? Or I'm afraid of what they're going to say or how the response is going to be. I'm afraid how they're going to react if I show my anger. So I'm just going to do that equally deadly that led to so much problems in my liver it would later on you know become the the heart heart problem that i experienced you know um, i i have to say i never got upset a single time angry a single time until i was about 25 mm -hmm. and then 
I remember the first time I I called someone uh, someone a driver. I said uh, I called him an asshole. <laughs> it's the first time I, and it was, it was like I'd never done that before. Right. Right. Yeah. So I was I was totally yeah. holding it in. Totally holding it in. Yeah, that's exactly the how you know you have suppression going on is when you bottle it up and then it explodes one day. So all that electric, like again, it's it's electric. Okay, it's all that electricity. You don't want to contain that because it will, it will erupt and it's not going to be pretty, right? All, all both of these um, reactive and suppressive forms of anger are deadly and harmful to ourselves and to others because it's it does it's not in wisdom. Okay, we're not consciously working with the energy. Um, we're unconsciously letting that energy control us. That's why it's harmful. Now, there is a, believe it or not, there is a anger that has wisdom and it comes from wisdom. And it's very important that we speak about this as I know lots of butterflies are on the call right, listening. Right. One, one thing I, uh, it might be appropriate before you continue mm -hmm. um, is, you know, some people, uh, you know, in the field of sound healing, they say express it, right? Express whatever right. you have going on. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I... I don't know that it's really good to beat a pillow or to scream, right? It's, you know, maybe if you're completely bottled up and you need to get, get it, you know, out, you know, maybe that's good. Yeah, but it, otherwise, what I found is when I actually beat a pillow, then I also, then all this other anger, I mean, every anger that I've had just starts showing up. And it's like, now I'm like full of anger. Right, because it brings it up. Even though I'm beating the pillow, I mean, it's like a, it's not it's not going into the pillow completely. It feels right. a little good, but I'm not, because I'm not bottling it up. But it doesn't get rid of it. Right. And right. there's even uh, I remember reading a book years ago, and it said, you know, that is not the way to do anger therapy. Is to just express it. I mean, if you're bottled up, you got to get unbottled, right? But but right. otherwise, yeah. It is, a, it is, there's nuances, absolutely. And I, I think that this is a field where, um, you know, we're doing a lot of learning and growing too. We're coming into mastery with our, our emotions and anger is a very, the most intense one. So, <laughs> so yeah, I, I, I see what you're saying. Absolutely. And I don't think there is one correct way to, to go about addressing a person's anger because we're all individual um, and we have differences on, on a on a soul level, right? And as individual souls, and I feel like that that needs to be acknowledged um, in order to really transmute it correctly and and completely. Um, I will share that when when butterflies are, are typically angered, it's not because they're coming from the suppressive or reactive states. It's because they're actually experiencing their intuition. And that intuition, that inner knowing is saying, look at the lie, here's the lie. And, and, and we, we really should be, you know, we really should be, that anger is justified in a way, right? But it's not to get stuck in it, it is not. There's no, no, no way in, in that the source has ever shared with me the ascended masters have ever shared with me. My own soul has never shared with me to stay in that anger. It's it's really to look at it, to acknowledge it, right? And this is that's the compassionate thing to do is just acknowledge what it is. There's no judgment in it, no shame in it. Just acknowledge, okay, I'm experiencing anger because this isn't right. This isn't right to bash the butterflies, right? It's not right. It, it shows that there's big gaps Right, that we uh, we as a humankind need to work on filling for each other, um, and uh, and then you know through through that acknowledgement, something beautiful happens. Uh, we we actually gain the wisdom of how right how to bridge these gaps, how to find solutions that will work, um, how to heal that anger that's arising, uh, whatever it might be. But I, I always, you know, I always find in my sessions that whenever we're dealing with really big anger, whether it's suppressed or reactive or whether it's justified because it's your inner knowing speaking, 
And maybe we're not, like, not listening to it, you know, because <laughs> so it starts speaking even louder. <laughs> um, that uh, it's always an invitation to look, go within, to go within and to look deeply, really face the truth, right? It's time for the truth. We can't hide anymore <laughs> and dismiss the truth. It, it's time now to really like embrace the truth, take it, right? Take it and, and look at it because it, it's in the truth that we discover who we are. We, we discover what the light is, what the love actually is and how it's right here. It really is that simple. You know, love has never left us. We, we've never been separated from it. We've never been disconnected from love. We, we've been taught that we've been disconnected from love. We've been taught to believe that we've been separated and disconnected all this time. And it's just not true. You know, it's not true. And, and there will be some anger with realizing the things that just are not true. You know, that's part of it. That's part of the process. But again, it moves, you see. And this is what I actually love about anger. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever heard this before from some, but I actually, actually kind of enjoy um, working with anger energy because it can move so quickly. Like once you find the truth, it just goes and it's gone. Uh -huh. Okay, because it, it, it's so intense. It's, it's the most <laughs> intense ele electricity there is. And it will just go, whoosh. you know, it doesn't want to stay in your body. It doesn't uh -huh. want to stay pent up in there. <laughs> right. 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 And it, it doesn't want to be weaponized either. It's like, don't misuse me, right? Use me for the truth. Use me for a higher and greater purpose. And that is when anger just flows freely and it moves out very quickly. So it doesn't torment, torment us. Um, it could actually bring about... Kuan Yin had shared this with me and I'll share it with you now. She said, if you could just sit still in your anger, sit still in it and allow that electricity to move up your spine because that is what's going to happen. Hmm. You really embrace it, really surrender to it. Allow the electricity to move up your spine. It will activate that pineal gland and it will cause your Kundalini to rise. Oh. Anger can do that. So I remember uh, a while back, um, I was talking to you about anger and you said, <clears throat> you don't know much of a way to work with anger in the 3D world, right? It's a matter of going to the 5D, right? Mm -hmm. And and that was really, I remember kind of going, hmm, hmm, right? And, and then... I started seeing that because over the last couple of years, more been I've been getting a lot higher. <laughs> right, I kind of go in the twenty fifth dimension, right, more often, and I realized. I mean, it's totally true. When you're in the zone, things you don't get upset, and I, I realized. So the whole path becomes simply going to a place of peace and stillness over and over and over, which we can do with sound. Really, it's so much fun. It's so, it's not boring, ever boring. Peace it, <laughs> is just a blast when you're doing sound. And there's so many ways. I mean, it could be, I mean, go, going on a hike. I mean, all the different ways that we get centered and back to ourselves. Because when you're, and then when you're there enough, the higher realms start opening up because you're not bouncing around and when the higher realms open and up open up which has been happening in the last couple of years it's like oh my god whoa and That's when it. you're in whoa mm -hmm. you know butterflies mm -hmm. get smashed and it's no big deal yeah yeah, you, you don't all, feel like you got to change the world, you know. Right, it's, it's, it's all easy. it's all part of it. It's it's mm -hmm. it's. I mean, you might still go kick them in the knee, but without mm -hmm. <laughs> with love, right? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's very different different how we handle ourselves. I feel when we have uh, absolute alignment to self, and we're we're open to the ascended self, and we're working we're working on the um on those levels, right? On the, the our multi dimensionality, oh. right? Oh my God! I got to tell you, I just remembered this thing. I've been, I just have been thinking about that happened when I was in 
in high school in Georgia, because I'm from Georgia, right? I was I grew up in kind of actually not kind of seriously redneck town where there was a lot of guns and knives. And I uh, had a party and these guys came and stabbed a couple of people. And I remember going up to the guy with the knife with still blood on it. And I looked at him and I went, <laughs> I forget what I said, but it was just this like energy of compassion. And I even did say, and he just kind of melted. I could have gotten stabbed right there, right? He just melted and I did an aura cleaning on him. I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> Yeah, that's it. Remember where our quote unquote enemies come from. Remember that where that pain comes from, right? Pain is just a lack of love. That's all that pain is. And we all have come from that. We're, no one here is special or any different. We all come from that world of pain and fear. We've experienced our own flavor of that. Um, not everyone is a, you know, serial killer or anything like that. I'm not saying like, you know, <laughs> doesn't, doesn't excuse um, stabbing someone. But, you know, in, in essence, at the core of that behavior is immense pain and karma, things like this, you know, things that that soul is here to learn and grow through. So whenever we can actually take a pause and access the higher self, and bring through the love that that person is, it's a beautiful reminder for that person. And it does neutralize conflict. It neutralizes the space where the energy of conflict is dancing and trying to take over. But we could, we are stronger than that. When we are in the love, when we are ourselves and we're no longer disconnected, we're in our wholeness, tapped in, turned on, we become a force of, of that love and that neutralizes the, the spaces we occupy, it neutralizes, um, uh, it can have an effect on the people around us, even the objects around us, 5G, <laughs> even that we can have an effect on that. And we are very powerful, immensely powerful beyond what I can even use words to describe, you know, but we can have these kinds of experiences just as you tapped into David, because you're not disconnected. You are that higher self, you are the love. And I remember, you know, this is, this is beautiful. I want to bring through this memory of when, when I first started apprenticing as a healer and learning from my teachers, the first thing that I learned that, that I realized as a truth was that all, all that disease is, is a lack of love fundamentally that that's, that's why it's in, you know, when I see it psychically, I see it as, as this darkness, right. Of some form of darkness, it, it's without light. It is without light, without love. And what we do as healers um, is we, we tap into that love by being it ourselves, by embodying that ourselves. And honey, that is hard to do. Okay. So I'm just going <laughs> to just take a break here and say congratulations to all practitioners and healers who understand me and are going, yep, you know, this is not, not an easy process. Okay. Well, we go through a lot. We've likely sacrificed a lot also to get to this place where we can embody that love and it could become easy for us to tap into that flow and share, share and transmit the love through the sound, through the crystal bowls, through, um, through uh, energy work, what, what, however we transmit it, 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 it goes into these places where it's dark, right? Where it's holding on to that lack and it, it transforms it into the truth. Everything, everything, all things inevitably go back to source, uh -huh. to that light. All things inevitably go back to the light. So this is what, what, what is taking place in a healing session where transformation happens. It's interesting. I was just thinking about, I've often thought that the ma main mastery is to be able to set boundaries, which I think of as with the solar plexus, while at the same time running love through the heart or universal love simultaneously. 
it's almost like the warrior that's still connected to source. But then I'm thinking, okay, the ultimate warrior, I mean, it's, I think, it, it, I mean, if you're being abused, you need to set boundaries, right? Mm -hmm. But the ultimate warrior could actually be only love. Yeah. Right? Revolutionary. <laughs> right, right. I mean, but it's got to be si serious. I mean, because it's, it's almost like that those boundaries get set by the love and there's not it's an, it's it's an, it's so interesting it's it's not even the boundaries get set it's just it overwhelms the other energy because yeah. right yeah so it's interesting so I've, I've so i've been thinking you know okay you got to set boundaries with love even the dalai lama talks about doing exactly that mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. in, in one of his books set mm -hmm. boundaries with love and then i then as you're talking i'm thinking just love. Just love. That's it. The more that you love yourself, right? And you 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 look within. And this is where people like me and, and David really help uh, be a mirror. Um, look within to find where those, you know, those dark places could be, where those places of tension, the places where it's lacking the love, lacking the light, lacking your connection. And bring the light there. Bring the light there, become whole, dare become whole and be the loving being you're here to be. That, that I feel like that's the that's the the highest purpose of any soul living on earth today is to realize that and to come home to that. And this is how we ultimately help each other. We help the collective thrive. You know, this is our birthright. <laughs> no excuses. <laughs> so so it seems, seems like the number one thing is for people to learn how to bring light, especially in a dark mm -hmm. place. And that's yeah. tricky sometimes. Right. Not easy. So, so mm -hmm. it's, <laughs> mm -hmm. but this is where we could have a lot of fun. I mean, I have a lot of fun doing my job as a healer. That's, that's basically it. That's what we uh -huh. do. We, uh -huh. right. we bring, we bring, um, we bring the light to what isn't light yet. Okay. Uh -huh. And that could actually be so much fun. Yeah. It's not uh -huh. easy. <laughs> and sometimes we could get trapped. We could get stuck in the story. Uh -huh. We could get stuck in the mind, but we have, um, uh, ways in which we can stay in the stillness and sound plays a, a major part of that. And the reason why I work with sound primarily um, is because sound creates light. Can you do a sound of light now? Absolutely. <laughs> I can help if you want. <laughs> okay, we could do it together. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. How about we, uh, we bring through universal love? Okay. For everyone to feel. Okay, cool. Okay. Let me let me do my thing here. I'm gonna put um, my audio filter off. Okay. There we go. Okay. Original <clears throat> sound on. anything 
else to do. <laughs> Nothing to do, right? <laughs> we just hang out here for the next hour. <laughs> oh, always, always. <laughs> Thank you so much, David. It's always just such such a joy to flow with you. And and you know, we talked a lot today, but I feel like we also shared an example of mm -hmm. what that emotional freedom looks like, what that flow mm -hmm. looks and feels like. Like it, it, it's like how we have our conversations. Nothing, nothing is scripted, nothing's prepared, nothing's planned. We just jump into it and acknowledge what is and what comes through as, as a knowing. And uh, I, to me, that's the greatest gift of healing. It's not even about, you know, getting over the illness. It's this, it's being able to connect like this. It's true connection um, and flow. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Let me go ahead and play my closing video. See ya. There's no button to play it. Oh, there it is. This has been a presentation of New Earth One Network, your home for New Earth living. Visit NewEarthOne.com.